Ron the Truth Killings defeated Ken Shamrock to become the second NWA World Champion of the TNA era. The best NWA World Champion of the TNA era. I can't deny it. It's a true statement. <laughs> it's kind of nice though to see that like Killings is undeniably the highlight of the early shows, even if some of the racism stuff is just like you'll tug your collar every so often but he is like hugely charismatic he's a giant star he's clearly the breakout star of the company they recognize it and they put the belt on him that's so nice to see even if like there's times where like there's a lot of times and it's not just with Ron Killing so it's like you can't tell what anyone is if they're a heel or a face or like they'll be a heel one week attacking people being a face one week attacking people and it's just very confusing there was like for this whole month I just thought that Brian Lawler turned face (laughs) because he was beating up Jeff Jarrett the whole time. Yeah. And then, like, on the last month, he was, like, cutting a You People promo, and I just threw my hands in the air. I'm like, it, it's impossible. You know how um Cody was always this guy's like, oh, there doesn't need to be heels and faces anymore, then just, just make everyone shades of grey. This is what the show looks like when everyone's shades of grey, and it's not easy to follow. <laughs> there is not. Other than Ron Killings, I don't think there is a single likable pro wrestler on this television show. And Killings is a heel half the time too. And Killings is a heel. I think he more or less turns baby face during this month and sticks baby face. But up until this, he's been a heel the whole time and he's been the most likable guy on the show. Shamrock, generic, boring. Nobody could possibly really care about him. Jeff Jarrett's too busy hitting people with chairs. Nobody likes him. But they do sometimes. (laughs) Scott Hall is probably the only guy who's like, yeah, I like Scott Hall. He's Scott Hall. Abject baby face, sure. But he's gone. So, (laughs) yeah. Like the one guy, Loki is a heel, I think. Yeah, but he's a he's a heel that gets cheered by everyone. Uh, Jerry Lynn veers based on the segment. AJ Styles veers based on the segment. It's it's such a bizarre show full of deeply unlikable people. It's actually impossible to tell who's meant to be a heel and who's meant to be a face. And again, to go back to Jerry's book, he mentions at the end of the month it was the Styles and Lynn against Lawler and Jarrett match that kind of opened his eyes to it. Where he's like, I was sitting there watching this match and realized nobody liked any of these people. Half the crowd was cheering, half the crowd was booing, nobody knew who was the heel, nobody who knew who was the face. It's just, a, like, as you said, there's people who are like, face and heels is an outdated idea in pro wrestling. And I, I send those people to the first two months, three months of NWA TNA. Go watch it and you will see what a pro wrestling show that doesn't have defined faces or heels looks like. And it's unwatchable. It's not good. Yeah. You kind of just have to pick your faves and side with with them through thick and thin. Like, I'm firmly on the Jerry Lynn train now. (laughs) Like, Jerry Lynn's my guy, so Jerry Lynn could, like, pile drive Mike Tanay next week. And I'd be like, well, I guess I gotta side with Jerry Lynn here. (laughs) Even within the Flying Elvises, who I believe are meant to be pitched as a babyface group. Or at least, like, Jorge and Jimmy, I think, are babyfaces. Well, for, like, three weeks they were. But they're here they're against, a, like, actual baby faces read the Maximos, but Siaki is a heel. I don't know. How am I supposed yeah. to feel about any of these things? Faces and heels put a railing on pro wrestling that is necessary for the enjoyment of pro wrestling. You can deviate and you can switch between the two, but if you just take those bumpers down, everything just gutter bowl because you don't understand anything that's happening. We're not new to wrestling. (laughs) We have watched pro wrestling shows for a long time. And for us to be confused by the motivations of the characters on the screen shouldn't be a thing that's happening, let alone to people who are like, oh, I might just give this TNA show a chance. Well, to be fair, if you watch one show, it might be okay. (laughs) Yeah, well then, just never come back. (laughs) That's what the incentive here is, just never return for a TNA show. Watch one and you'll be fine. To be fair, though, even if you watch one, you might won't necessarily be because Ron Killings will be a face in one segment and a heel in another. Brian Waller will be face in one and then he'll be heel with another. Jeff Jarrett will be face facing one guy and then heel with another. So, like, even even if you are just parachuting in for one show, you're going to be confused by at least one of the ten tweeners on this show. It's a very strange show to watch and invest in. I don't like any of these human beings. Yeah. Except Ron, who is world champion. So... Good job, Ron. But then Ron does some we so does some less than uh, appropriate things too. But that was before August, so <laughs> so we can write it off. We're only talking about August.